guys, welcome to Urban Treats. Today I'm going to show you how to make one of my all-time favorite Arabic desserts. This one is called Lebanese Nights or also called Matluka in Lebanon. And it's a semolina pudding with ashta cream topped with pistachios and sugar syrup on top. Now, as always, the ingredients are in the description and don't forget, if you like this video, leave us a like and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Let's get started. The ingredients, as always, are in the description, but let's get through what you need. First of all, you will need about eight cups or two liters of milk. I'm using whole fat milk, but you can use skim milk. It works just the same. We have 150 grams of sugar. That's approximately half a cup. And we have 100 grams of semolina. That's one cup of semolina. We will also have some vanilla extract, but we're gonna add that at the end. Now let's get started. We'll add all the milk in our heavy saucepan. Here we go. A lot of milk, but we're making a big pudding. And we'll just add in our semolina. And we add in the sugar. Just give it a quick stir to lightly combine everything. You don't want to have any dry clumps in the milk. And now we will bring this to a simmer and then lower the temperature and let it cook until it thickens. Just keep stirring as the cream thickens and be careful because sometimes if a little bit of the cream burns on the bottom of the saucepan, if you scratch it then you'll have little pieces in your semolina pudding. Be gentle, don't press it down too hard in case you have that little film of, um, of burnt cream on the bottom. This is almost ready, you can see it's already starting to thicken and we need a few more minutes and then we're ready. We are ready. The semolina cream is nice and thick, you can see, and as it cools down, it's gonna thicken even more. Now, at this step, we add the last ingredients, and one of them is a little bit of uh, vanilla extract. We'll just add one teaspoon of that. Here we go. We wait until the end to add in the flavors, because we don't wanna cook them together with the semolina. And then traditionally, you would also add some blossom extract, or we call it, in, here in Cyprus, we call it rose water. I have two different flavors here, and both are used for this recipe. Um, this one here is a rose extract, and this one here is an orange uh, blossom extract. Both work really well. The rose one in Cyprus is the traditional one, but this is a Lebanese recipe, and as, what, as far as I could find online, the one that's most used is this one here, the orange one. For that, we're gonna add two to three tablespoons. Now, this is quite a strong flavor. It smells really, really nice. But be careful, don't add too much to it. Um, it can easily overpower the whole flavor of your dessert. I'm going to add just two tablespoons. Two to three is good, but I know my family doesn't like uh, this flavor too much, so I'm just adding two. We're gonna let this cool down for a minute. I'm gonna tidy up here and I'll get my dish in which we're gonna let the cream cool. I'll be back in a second. For the next step, we're gonna put down the first layer of cream, which is our semolina cream, and this has to cool in the fridge. So you will need a um, dish that holds at least one and a half liters, 1.7 liters of liquid. We're using two liters or eight cups of milk here, so it's a big portion, um, and that's why I'm gonna use two of those and it's plenty to fill both of those up. Just keep that in mind. Now, get a ladle, or if you wanna just pour it directly from the saucepan. I prefer to use a ladle because then I can measure it better. And just fill up the form to approximately half um, of the total height of the form. You might wanna spread it out just a little bit because this has already started to thicken. Mm -hmm. 
When I was a kid, my grandma used to make a lot of semolina pudding. I really loved it. It's a simple dessert. It's really just milk, semolina, sugar, and some flavor. And then we maybe add in some cacao or something. But this, uh, this Lebanese dessert is very different. I love Arabic desserts in general, and I just really enjoy this one. And this here, here you can see what I told you before. If you have a look here in the pan, you can see here in the pan, a little on the bottom has been burned. And if you stir it too hard, and if you stir the edges too hard, then that burned bit will get into your semolina cream. Remember, when you simmer this, keep stirring, but use a wooden spoon so you don't scratch the bottom, and go easy. Okay, let's just level this here out a little bit. Okay, that's it. And we'll just cover this with some cling film and put it in the fridge. Um, a big portion will need about two to three hours to sit, but the small one will set in about 30 to 40 minutes. While this is setting, we're gonna prepare the ashta cream, which is the clotted cream that goes on top. Let's do that. Next, we're preparing the second layer for our matluka. And the second layer is called ashta cream. Ashta cream is a heavy cream or a heavy clotted cream uh, made out of heavy cream, milk, and some other ingredients which we're gonna go through now. We're gonna add one cup of heavy cream to our saucepan. And to that, we are adding half a cup of milk. Again, we're using full fat milk, but I have tried this with low fat milk and it worked just the same. So no stress, whatever milk you have available. The next, we're adding two tablespoons of cornstarch. We're adding one teaspoon of sugar and we're adding two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Now give this a quick stir and then we're gonna bring it to simmer and we're gonna keep stirring it until it thickens. As soon as it thickens, we take it off the heat. So let's do that now. Put the heat on a medium-low and keep stirring. You don't want it to burn at the bottom. The cream is now almost done and you can see I'm actually stirring a bit faster than before. I want to make sure it doesn't burn on the bottom of the pan and I don't want it to have nice uh, big bits as well. Keep stirring quickly until it's really nice and thick and then you can do a test to see if it's actually done. I will show you how that looks in a moment. If you want to see if the cream is ready, then just grab a little bit with your uh, whisk and it should fall off just like this. It's sticky, it's not completely set, but it smoothly runs off your whisk. And this means it's ready. We're gonna take it off the heat now. Just switch off your heat, or if you use another kind of hop, just take it off the heat. We're gonna stir it just a bit more, and then we're gonna add the flavor, just as we did at the semolina, in the semolina base. We're gonna add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Quickly stir that in. And we also add two tablespoons of rose blossom or the orange blossom water that I've shown you before. I'm adding rose blossom. A couple of teaspoons, here we go. Tablespoons. And that's it. Give that a stir. Ooh, a little slower. And this is ready to add to our semolina pudding. The semolina pudding has to be set before you add this on the top. So make sure you time both of the recipes accordingly, uh, because if it's too hot and you put it on the semolina and it's still soft, it's gonna sink into each other and you won't get two separated layers. I will just get my cool semolina pudding and I'll add this on top. And then we make the final step, which is the chopped pistachios and the golden syrup that goes on top. I'll see you in a moment. My semolina pudding has cooled and is ready and we're gonna add the ashta cream on top. And the easiest way to do that is if you just add little blobs over the cream, like so, because mine has already set a little bit. 
because my Asher cream is already a little thick. I just plop it around the pan, around the semolina pudding, and then I'm gonna use a spatula or you can use a palette knife maybe and just spread it evenly across the semolina pudding. Now, I could have taken it off the heat a little earlier when it was a little more liquidy and just poured it on top and then let it uh, settle on the fridge and that would have given it this shiny finish. But it works fine just this way too because we're covering it after with pistachios. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be a, a perfect finish on the top. Okay, spread that nice and even. Set it aside. I've saved the cling film from before, so I'm just gonna cover this so it doesn't get um, milk skin while it's cooling. Okay, just leave this here aside. And until this cools down, I'm gonna prepare the pistachios that go on top. And there's really not much to do here, just chop them up roughly. I have about a, a cup, a cup and a half of pistachios here for the whole recipe. And just roughly chop them and then just sprinkle them evenly on top. Rough chop is fine, they don't have to be super fine. And if you want, actually, you can toast these a little bit before, uh, before you chop them. Just put them in a pan, two, three minutes at a medium-high heat, uh, toast them a little break, and it brings out the flavor a bit more, if that's something you want to do. But even if you don't, trust me, it tastes great. Okay, I think that's about enough now. So let's sprinkle this on top of the Lebanese Nights dessert. Here we go. And just try as even as possible, grab a little bit and try and cover it as even as you can. And that's my small portion ready. Look how beautiful that looks. Now we're gonna let this set completely in the fridge until the bottom is cool to the touch as well. Theoretically, you could eat it right now, but we still have to make the syrup. And if you wanna cut it out of the pan and come out nice and with uh, sharp edges, then you will have to wait for it to cool. So we'll put this in the fridge. I'll do a quick clean up here and let's prepare the syrup. The last step of the recipe is the syrup that goes on top of the Matluka or the Lebanese Nights dessert. And for that, I'm using one cup of brown sugar. Combine it with half a cup of water. And we will add a couple of tablespoons of rose water. Now, if you're not a fan of the rose water, don't add too much. Or if you want to leave it out, you can leave it out too. But the traditional flavor calls for rose water. Give that a bit of a stir. And now we'll bring that to a boil and we let it simmer for five to six minutes. Let all the sugar dissolve and then take it off the heat. Now you can use white sugar if you want. I prefer to use brown sugar because it has more flavor and it gives it a nice color as well. But if you only have white sugar at home, use white sugar, it works perfectly well. Um, and you just use the same amounts and you get a nice white syrup. I might be tempted to put some syrup on mine today. <laughs> because usually I don't add syrup because it's already sweet enough. But some people like it. This one here is done. It's cooked for five, six minutes. And I'm gonna put it into this little jar and I'll set it aside and let it cool. Careful. Here we go, that's ready. We'll let this cool down and then we're gonna give the matluka or the Lebanese night's dessert a try. Let's do it. And that's how you make Lebanese night's dessert or matluka. And before we go for the taste test, as always, if you've enjoyed this video, Leave us a like, and if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Now, let's give it a taste test. Here we go. Mm -hmm. 
one of my favorite Arabic desserts. It's really nice. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next week.